What's up guys, Dark Dally here playing Ghost Recon Wildlands and today I want to continue having a look at some of the newer weapons that have just been made available recently. Today I want to have a look at the R4. Uh, this is a pretty cool assault rifle. This is the rifle and this is also the outfit. This is the whole loadout you may have seen me running in my latest Milsim Op, the Operation Fireblade that I ran in collaboration with Real Time Commanders. This is the weapon I was running, and this is how I was using it. Now, what I want to do today is I want to do some practical testing of this weapon. Um, I definitely think I proved its combat effectiveness uh, for sure. It's definitely quite the effective rifle. Here today, I want to compare its accuracy over range, i.e. its bullet drop, against previous ARs that we've tested. Let's see how you know accurate it is over range. And then we're going to do a practical little test on a convoy, as I often like to do. We're going to stop the convoy out about 300 meters out. We're going to fire some shots and, you know, see how that works. For right now, we're doing the bullet drop aspect of this. Now, here's how I had the weapon set up in the Milsim op that you saw us run just the other day uh, that I ran with Craig from Real-Time Commanders. Here's the setup I was running. Uh, I was running a standard barrel, uh, range finder, UGL, ACOG scope. Makes it a pretty versatile setup. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to reset all the parts. We're going to strip it down fully stock because we want to test it, um, well, we want to test it. We're going to start off like this. We're going to see how the bullet drop is stock, and then we're going to modify it and see how it goes. First of all, can I not get iron sights? Yeah, I can. It comes with a panoramic sight, but you can put iron sights on it. Let's see how accurate these iron sights are. Sometimes weapons are a bit off with their iron sights, like, you know, in the case of the M16, and that was a real shame. Let's see how this guy fares. Um, okay, it looks to me like it's shooting a little high, but... Nah, that's right on. But wait, what if we back up? I think it's mostly, uh... Yeah, yeah, it's iron sights are on. We're good. Let's go ahead and park my team here. Now, it's starting to get dark, so we might have to... Let's, let's hurry this along here. First of all, let's get some optics for it, because we don't want to do a test at uh, 250 meters. It's the range we've been doing these at. We don't want to do that with no... Kind of optics. I have been using the Comp M4 and it seems to work fine at this range. There it is. So, other than that, the rifle is totally stock as it comes out of the box. Standard barrel, rail cover. Yep. And then we'll try it with the rangefinder along barrel. That's going to make it more accurate. We'll see how that goes. First, let's move back to 250 meters. Now, if you're not familiar with this series, there'll be a link to the playlist of all of my assault rifle tests or at least this series of assault rifle tests down in the description below. And if you're not familiar with this, I'm gonna go ahead and put that graphic on screen now. On the right side of the screen, you see where all the assault rifles hit stock. On the left side of the screen, you see where those same rifles hit fully modified. And some of those names are blue. Um, that's because those rifles, for whatever reason, couldn't be modified, and so that is their bullet drop. Like the Bad News, the uh, FAMAS G2 is another one that simply can't be modified for bullet drop. Uh, that's why those names are blue. All right, so let's m move back to 250 meters here, and let's try to do this before we lose our light. And then we'll go out and we'll hit that convoy. So here we are at 250 meters. There we go, perfect. All right, let's see where this guy hits. It looked like it hit kind of low. I expect it probably will. This might be a lower hitting rifle. All right, so stock we hit. Actually, that's not too far out of the range of some similar weapons. You see we hit right there. All right, so that puts it down there with the Mark 17, the Tar 21, many really good rifles hit a little lower. Let's go ahead and let's modify this. Let's get us say, uh, I'd like to get through this a little quick because it is getting dark. Let's go ahead and just slap the long barrel and the rangefinder on. Let's just get an idea of where this guy is gonna hit at optimum you know, accuracy over range settings, which is what we have right now. Let's just have a look. Because the long barrel and the rangefinder are the only two things that are going to affect its bullet drop, we'll just throw them both on. Sometimes I test with one part and then the other, but we are losing light. That was significantly higher. That should be, that could be as much as two and a half bricks higher. Th there we have it, just over two bricks higher. We have it right there. Now, I'm going to go ahead. So there we see uh, where it hit stock. There we, there we see where it hit modified. Let's go ahead and let's add this to the graphic and pull this graphic up. And now you can see where it hits compared to other rifles. Really, it's not bad. There are ones that shoot uh, uh, flatter, you know, but actually this is really not bad. That's, uh, so that's with maximum improvement on the R4. That's where you can expect to hit. We still have a bit of daylight left. So let's go ahead and let's actually just 
let's pop off that rangefinder. Let's see what just the barrel does for it. I'll tell you right now that rangefinder is going to give you about half a brick on that wall. So over 250 meters, that's about four or five inches or so. Rangefinders do very little. The barrel, it does most of the work. So let's go ahead. Let's take off the rangefinder. So this is going to be with just a long barrel. If you fire, uh, you know, put a laser sight or any other attachments and then you, you decide to just run the long barrel, here's what kind of gain you're going to see. I'm guessing about a brick and a half of gain, which I've seen better gain from some rifles for sure. There we go. Let's go ahead and see where that hit. Yeah, I kind of did this out of order. I wasn't going to do this particular test, but then I decided to. I want to get out there and take that convoy and see how this thing works. All right, and there you can see we went up a little over a brick and a half. You can see, as you see the range finder, so right, that right there, the gap between those top two bullet holes, that's all you get from the range finder. It, it helps slightly. Most of your gain comes from adding that long barrel. Personally, I say run a short barrel on your rifles. If you're going to snipe, use a sniper. But here it is, here's the info, and use it as you will. Here's where it hits stock. Here's here where it hits with the long barrel. And here's once you add in the rangefinder as well, you're hitting up here. And that ain't bad, guys. All right, so let's move on to the other part of this test. Let's travel out to Kwani, where it's so easy to take a convoy. We're going to put it on, I'm not going to put it on tier, I'm going to put it on extreme. And the reason for that is because I don't have this weapon leveled up yet. So it'd be kind of unfair to test it in tier mode um, because I simply, I don't have the resources to level it right now. I think extreme will suffice. Usually I do prefer to take convoys in tier mode. Let's go ahead and do this and see how it fares. We got the convoy stopped. Oh, right where I wanted it between 250 and 350 meters. Let's go ahead and get a good setup for our R4 here. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go, well, just go with the best zoom. And we're going to go with the long barrel. We, we want to get as much range out of this as we can. Under barrel, we're going to go with the one with the best recoil control. And for the rail, we're going to go with a range finder. And I really don't care if we make noise. Let's put that compensator on, keep our barrel down. And that looks good. This is a good setup for long range. You don't need a 50 round up. Oh, we don't have a 50 round very well. We'll go with 30. All right, so let's see what this guy can do at range here. We're just going to be taking pot shots at these guys. Let's see what kind of bullet drop we have to compensate for. We're at about 300 meters here. There we go. The guy's three shots. Now, the reason I do this is because they're just standing there, but they're alert. So you get a really a fairly accurate readout on damage. Did he get down on me? I think he got down. Yeah, so three shots. You know, that's really not bad. Three shots ain't bad. A lot of times these guys take four shots with assault rifles. Okay, that guy should be... He must be... Uh, truck must be blocking him. This guy's down on the ground. Wow, that's pretty consistently three shots. Which I can't seem to do either. There we go. Yeah, screw that guy. Take him out with a sniper. Okay. That guy was pissing me off. Let's go ahead. These guys back here. These guys are 360 meters. We're going to want to uh, adjust for a little more bullet drop. This is pretty consistently three shots. And as far as I, I didn't see any critical hits there, I wasn't really looking though. I hit both guys with that bullet. This thing's performing pretty darn well. It looks like we're going to have to move forward to engage the rest of them. So let's do that with caution. Let's be very cautious when we do this. Oh, they might rush us. So let's go to full auto just in case that does occur. Let's see, can we get this guy now? Yeah, we can get this guy now. And he went... Oh, here we got a guy right here. Um, I think that was a critical headshot. Because that was a one-shot kill. Did he man the gun? I think so. Oh, he's back out. You know, this is... Wow, this is performing pretty well. Again, some of these are critical shots. Some are headshots. That's why I like to do the whole convoy to get a kind of overall read on it. But so far, it's not taken more than three bolts to take one guy down. And assault rifles often in this test take four. I'm finding this pretty promising. This is, uh, well, again, this is the rifle I used my latest Milsim op with real-time commanders. And that was a one-shot kill, non-crit. That must have been a headshot. All right, so take from that what you will, guys. Um, what you saw in the graphic, the way this compared to the bullet drop of the other rifles, 
Um, again, if you haven't seen the, the Milsim op that I did with Real-Time Commanders, the Operation Fireblade, this is the rifle I was using, and it performed well throughout the op. And here, as you can see, it performed quite well too. Of course, we're, we are only on extreme. We're not like on full tier mode, uh, but f maximum three shots per enemy. Some I dropped in one or two shots, and we're talking ranges of 300 plus meters. Well, uh, that one guy was what, 360 meters, and I dropped him in two to three shots. So I gotta say, this is a pretty good weapon. It's a cool rifle, guys. If you don't have it, I'll show you how to get it, actually. I'll show you how I got it. There may be other ways to acquire this rifle. I did have to buy it from the store. That's not everyone's cup of tea. I realize that. I'll show you where I got it. Now, there's lots of ways to buy these, these weapons that came out recently. And the way I did this was, instead of buying that huge, like, $30 pack with all the fancy colored weapons, I just went... Uh, down to weapon packs, and I just got the pack with the base weapons. I'd rather have those anyway, and that's because you can modify them. Fallen Ghost Weapons right here. This is where I got it. I want to say it cost me like $10. That's not, again, that's not everyone's cup of tea, but I got the PSG-1, the Vector R4, the MDR, and the PDR. And these are other weapons I will be testing. I will be testing the PSG-1, the MDR, and the PDR here soon. Uh, so this is how I got the R4. If you're curious how to get it, there's other versions that you can get it through the Extenieros. Yeah, <laughs> through the Extenieros packs. I believe you can get different versions of it here. Yeah, the Extenieros R4. But I'm not really keen to spend 2,400 points just to get a different skinned version of the same rifle. So there you go, guys. That's my look on the Vector R4 and what I think about it. Okay, here's what I think about it. It took a maximum of three shots to drop targets at over 300 meters. That's pretty good for me. It has a decent rate of fire. Doesn't have the best recoil. It doesn't have the best rate of fire. It doesn't have the best bullet drop. But what it offers in this package is actually pretty good. Guys, tell me what you think in the comments below. I really like this weapon. I'll be using it more in the future. But tell me what you think. Guys, it's been a real pleasure. I'm Dark Dally. I will catch you guys next time.